honestly don't really know how to feel right now. I'm nervous, I'm sad, I'm feeling all these emotions. I don't really know. I don't really know. <sighs> Welcome to the Hollywood Podcast. This is your father? <laughs> My guest, Hadassah, says that she needs my help discovering the truth with her 41-year-old DNA mystery. Hadassah says her mother was 16 years old when she was born, and her alleged father, Sean, was only 14. Sean's family has never accepted her, and this is the first time that her mother and alleged father will be in the same room to have this conversation. And Hadassah is ready to get some answers. Hey. How are you doing? I don't know. Oh. give you a hug. You said you don't know how you're doing. What's going on? Talk to me. Um, of course, I want the answers. I just, I don't think I expect it. I'm overwhelmed. Of course. I'm dysregulated, I guess that's yeah. the word. I'm, yeah. It makes sense. It makes sense. Um, because this is 41 years of so much pain that you've probably experienced. So you heard what your mom had to say. How are you feeling about what she was saying? I don't think all of the blame lies solely on Sean. They were kids. It was messy. It was nasty. Yeah. Um, but I'm 41, and I've been asking for this. I've been asking these questions from her for years, and we can't ever kind of get to a resolve with it because it turns into, like, this huge emotional combative thing. So I usually end up having to, like, put what I'm feeling away to kind of address, because she was 16. Yeah. So I put myself in the mind of a 16-year-old girl, finds out another girl is pregnant, then your baby's, like, so I'm there all the time, but all this time while I'm understanding for everyone else, I've just been, like, in limbo. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, it's okay, you're doing a great job. Oh. So what does this DNA outcome today mean to you? Clarity. Peace, and I'm hoping some major healing. Yeah. Well, listen, everyone, I think it's time we meet Sean and hear what he has to say about all this. Everyone, please welcome Sean to the show. <laughs> welcome to the show, sir. I didn't know no better. I knew all the time she was mine. So then why I, did you tell your family that Hadassah being wasn't scared, yours? You being scared. scared. You know, I go tell them, man, I got in physical fights, not, you know, arguments, you know, over her, saying that she's mine. Yeah. But they had it in their mind. But then this also played a part. I met her mother through a friend. After me, her mother started messing around with one of my brothers, to my knowledge. Yeah, yeah. But he is not your father, you know? There's no way possible. He was born way before he came to the picture. It's just after the fact that she kept coming over to the house, he going over to see her. That's why my family had real bitterness about this. Hadassah has said that you only showed up at 12. Where were you at the beginning of her life? In and out of jail. Okay. Running the streets. So, but you still pay child support. Why? Why do I pay child support? Yeah. Because I didn't want to go to jail. So, you showing up was more about a necessity not to go back to jail. I was just trying to do right. I used to sneak around over there. She used to wake up some morning, she'd see me there, and she'd be happy then, I don't know what, you know, to take her to school. Yeah. Thing with me and her mother, I had blood and love for us. I mean, she did right. But she lied to me also. A lot she of things she said about she was doing, it was her grandmother that did it. Well, why didn't you get a DNA test sooner? Because I, 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 on my heart, I didn't, I didn't need it. It's another thing, too. But is, I know you didn't need it, but she needed it. She's she been needs, hearing all these mixed messages her entire she, life. I mean, well, recently, she just started coming up like this, and I was hoping that we can get, a, get around this here. But, you know, it's something bothering her, and I, I swear she deserves the best. She deserves it, but she don't need okay. this on her mind. Nobody needs this on her mind. So, in order to get to the bottom of this 41-year-old DNA mystery, I think it's time that we meet Hadassah's mother, Rutha. Um, everyone, welcome Rutha to the show. <laughs> so, you look upset, Rutha. I part? am, because you've been telling a lot of lies, brother. What are the lies you You still in denial? I slept with your brothers? Never. Never. Wait a minute. Never. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I did not say you, you know I did not say I don't you still want to hear nothing. You got to say, today you're going to learn today. Say, today you're going to learn today. You, you have put me through so much mess and my daughter. I'm tired of you. 
put you through too much. It's done. What did I put you it's through? done. What I put you through? I was, what I have was, I put I you was 16 through? years old too. And what you put me through, you lied and said she wasn't yours. And then that, and all of a sudden she yours. And she not yours. And then, what do you want me to do? I, I hurt my daughter because of me not being able to know how to deal with it. No, thank you. Just shut down. <laughs> I, knew how to, I hurt her because I didn't know how to deal with it. Because I, I was a child. And I had to do what I had to do as a mother, as other people to help. I get it. I get it. There's a lot of pain but here. I, I ain't no whore, and I've never been a whore, and I ain't never sleep with your brother. First of all, I never but said you did. You're going to listen today. You're going to listen, today. Today. You're listen. to me today. I'm tired of you. I'm tired of you. I'm oh, just tired of you. Well, I never did, liked well, you. I well, like you either. I don't like you, never and like never you like your mother either. You was another, was your mother, your mother, mother never like your mother. That's right, that's right, that's right. I don't like your mother. To the day, to the day right now, and I got energy from my mother that I don't care. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know the pain y'all are going through. The minute y'all started arguing, your daughter, Come on, you see what's happening. And you come out here with this feeling, it's about her right now. It's about her now. Shut up, Sean. Hold on, she's still crying backstage. Do you understand what y'all are doing to your little girl? Yes, sir, I do. And I'm, and I'm here today because I want it stopped. My heart is still bleeding from that 16-year-old girl, like she said. I don't know how to, I don't know how to deal with it. It's still today. I don't know how to deal with I hear it. You. I need help. I hear you. Because I don't want to hurt her. I hear you. I'm, or I'm gonna my talk kids. To or my grandkids. I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. Let me go talk to your daughter, OK? <laughs> Come back. My love, what's going on? I'm sorry, what is going on? How are you feeling? <laughs> take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. On the count of three, take a deep breath in. One, two, three. Take a deep breath out. Count of three, deep breath in. One, two, three, in. Deep breath out. Would you like some water? I want to go home. I'm over it. It's okay. I can't do this anymore. It's like, whatever. I'm yeah. done. So one of the things you said to me is because of this pain, you shut down. I ask you, can you give me an opportunity to support you in this moment? What is on your mind? This is, this is what they've done all my life. This is what has been. This is what she does. I, I don't, I don't want it. Yeah. I just don't, I just, I just want peace, and this isn't it. And I'm sorry I even brought it up. I just, it's okay. I don't you don't have to apologize. I gotta go back there. I gotta go back there. You deserve I gotta clarity. Go you deserve I gotta go back there. You screaming. You deserve all I gotta go back there. You deserve not to feel like you have no, to shut No, I can just be a parent who doesn't scream. I'm okay. I, I, I can't, I'm sorry. Dawson, I'm, I'm so sorry. I don't know why she come out here. No, 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 don't do that. You can't do that. No, you can't do that. You can't do that. No, 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 Please, give me a minute. She just needs a second. She just needs a moment. She don't need to open that. She needs to. I always will be my daughter. What does it say? <laughs> Says Hadassah, Sean is your father. You've been vindicated. Anybody who would ever talk to a 14 year old or 16 year old child and make her feel like she was worthless and make her feel like she was a slut. This is part of your vindication, too. And allow that vindication to start to heal some of that pain. Do you feel that? Yeah, I do. 
Thank you. And this is a moment for you of clarity. You now know. I know. You know. How does it make you feel to know? Relieved. Excited. Yeah. These are your parents. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> now we spoke your parents. Finally. I think this clarity, this vindication is going to help the healing that has already started before. You all were able to see each other for the children you were and understand adults played a big role in this. Stop blaming each other. You also got to hear that your daughter needs boundaries sometimes. And so when she says something, and I think this is a big one for you, sir, because I've noticed every time she says, give me a moment, you still like, hold on. And I see you're doing it out of love. Because even as she was opening that envelope, you were trying to comfort her and let her know, it doesn't matter, I'm here for you. But even when you're trying to love her, you gotta still respect that boundary. And if you can do that, it's going to help the relationship get stronger with all of y'all. Now, the biggest piece of this is something that somebody who's not on this stage right now, and that's your family. They have rejected all of you. You, you, and you. And I say they rejected you because by the fact that they denied you a relationship and put doubts in minds, that's part of the thing that separated you and caused you pain and caused you hurt. Yes, you were a 14-year-old boy that said something, but that should have never gave permission to adults to take that and run with that for almost 41 years. That's out of order. Great. I know you've tried, but now you all need to be united and let that family know, together, we are not going to stand for rejection anymore. Absolutely. Can y'all be united and do that? Absolutely. What would that do for each of you to be able to tell them, no more rejecting us? The reject whatever. It was the disrespect for me. Y'all have to unite. Because part of that is what I was saying with the next step of your healing is that you have to be able to tell these people, just like you, just like you, and this is important for you too, you don't realize it, but what they did in rejecting them also hurt you. There's wounds and pains there. They put doubt. They caused you to have to go to a place where you're now torn between two people, your daughter, your family, your, this woman. It caused pain. The word family is overrated. It's this right here and her sisters, this, is my, this and my grandchildren. That's what I live for now. Yeah? That's your family, too? Yes, it is. And y'all got to start communicating and loving each other as family. I need you as well to say, what's that make you feel when he's doing that? I don't know how to feel. You know why? Because he spent 41 years of being told that you were wrong and all these things. That's still that little girl. But again, remember, I forgive you because you're a child too. And what's going on right now is he would have did this as a child if he would have had proper guidance, but he's doing it now. Yep. I asked for y'all to be united front and he stepped up and grabbed both of your hands. Let it go. I'll do it again if I have to. I'm in that place where I can forgive and forget and I know we family always have been and I just need, you know, some more counseling to continue to heal because it's just... Yeah, this is a step, a, a step. first step. I'm just giving you all the language to recognize what's been going on. I'm giving you some tools to understand how to move forward, but you take a big step here. Your daughter has clarity. You all understand now to respect her boundaries and y'all are united finally. Okay. Do you think you can start to heal from here? Oh, yes. You do? For sure. What, is there anything else you need? Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I hear you, girl. I hear you. Do you feel like you got what you needed from me? I do. Thank Good. You. You're welcome. Do you feel like you were seen and got what you needed today? Yes. Do yes. you feel like you got what you needed? Yes. Then we can move on. Welcome to the show, friends. Listen, two years ago, Nishay connected with a man named Michael on Ancestry. She originally thought he was her cousin. But get this. He told her that the Ancestry test led him to believe that he could be her father. Until now, Nishe has never questioned who her father was. She was raised by a man who she has always thought was her biological father. But two weeks ago, he revealed that he had doubts. Take a look at this. Karamo, I need your help to help me solve this 29-year-old DNA mystery. Two years ago, I connected with a man that I thought was my cousin on AncestryDNA.com. 
I didn't think he was serious when he told me he can be my father. I already have a dad. He raised me since I was a little girl. Can you imagine how confused I was when he told me it was a possibility that he was not my father? I used to be daddy's little girl, and now I don't know who my father is. I blame my mother. This is her fault. My mother has never been there for me, and she needs to be held accountable for ruining my life. Everyone, please welcome Nishay to the show. Hi. Yes, outfit. You look great. Thank you. Yes, you do. Can I have a hug? Yes. Mm, come on, pretty in pink. Yes. Um, okay, Nashe, just tell me, how did you end up on Ancestry in the first place? Uh, well, basically, I was just going on there, honestly, to look up my heritage and to actually help my mom as well. Um, she doesn't know who her father is, so we wanted to look up some things and figure something out. Wow, okay. And so you connect with this person, you re realize you have connections. Right, so as I was on the uh, Ancestry, I seen that I was related to about 5,000 and something people. Mm -hmm. And basically, uh, there was a match. It was a guy on my dad's side, supposedly fourth cousin, and uh, we had about 49% uh, percent shared DNA. So 50% is kind of a lot. So, yeah. you know, I hit him up like, hey cousin, what's yeah. going on, <laughs> yeah. you know? Like and uh, he didn't respond back. This was in 2021, and he barely responded back um, this year. So. Um, and when he responded back, that's when he said, I think I could be your father? He basically responded, uh, do you think we could talk? Um, do you think you can give me a call or we can like uh, meet up possibly? There's some questions I wanna ask you. Of course. So I was like confused. I'm like, what do you mean questions? So I found him on Facebook and we connected there. I gave him a call and he basically asked me like, what was my mom's name? I told him my mother's name. He asked me for a picture. I sent him a picture and he was like, yeah, we have to talk in person. What did that do to you in that moment? Cause you're thinking this man is your cousin. Yeah. And you're like, hey cuz, <laughs> and then also like, what dad? Like yeah, it, it shocked me honestly. Cause I had no idea. You know, I instantly start thinking about my mom. I'm like, so did you even know? Like, yeah. you know, I had so many questions that I, I just didn't have the answers to. Were you a daddy's girl growing up? Yes, yes. I was, yes. I, I'm, uh, my full name is Antoine Niche, but I go by Niche. Um, I'm named after my father, mm -hmm. you know. Um, He's, he was everything to me. He he cooked for me, cleaned for me. We played together. We went to amusement parks together. He was my best friend, you know, and you know, now that I have this information, it's kind of, you know, it makes me a little bit emotional. It makes me sad because the family that I grew up knowing as my family possibly could not be my family. Nishe, are you ready to talk to your mom now? Yes. Okay. Well, welcome everyone, Cherie, to the show. <laughs> Cherie, thank you so much for being here. Um, how are you feeling right now? I'm feeling nervous and a little ashamed. Okay, why are you feeling ashamed? Because a lot of the things that my daughter said is is true. Mm -hmm. I was a young mother. I was a young mother. I had a lot of kids to deal with at that time. And I did put a lot of things on her, responsibilities that should have been mine. Has your mother ever acknowledged this before? No. Never? Mm-mm. Your daughter's here crying because she says she's never heard that from you before. You know I love you, baby. You know I love you, Nisha. You my firstborn. You my first child. You was like my little mini-me. I was not given a book on how to raise any kids. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't giving a I book. Gave, I did with the best that I could with what I had for you guys. But you could have gained more knowledge to do better. I am so sorry for everything that I put you through. What do you want me to do? What, I don't. What, but sometimes do I don't feel like your apology is genuine. I don't feel like you really mean that. But you're 25 years old, Nishay. 
29, Mom. 29. I'm 29. Wow. Well, a part of this is, Sh Cherie, you can't say to someone that just because they're older that they should get over it. Um, your daughter's pain from her childhood, which you acknowledge yourself was unfair that she went through this. You know that she went through stuff. She's still hurting. Yes. She's, she said that there was yes, a time girl. in your life that you were at her award shows, that you were there with yes, her, you girl. did things, and then you stopped. Why did you stop? Because I had so I had a busy life with raising kids and having to be mm, there yeah. for all well, the kids that I had. But, but she's one of your kids, so why did you stop? Because your excuse is... Um, and I understand that you were young and you went through a, you you were trying to figure it out. Okay. But you said you were there for the other kids, but she's exactly. one of your kids. Why why did you stop with her? Like probably because I had men in my life too that. Yes, and that was one of my also. big problems. Men played a big part in my life. Yes, and you showed them more I attention, did. and you showed me. That's for sure. You know, I needed you and in I'm my life. I that, needed baby. you like to be there for me to build me up, not break me down. Are you ready to meet Michael for the first time? Um, yeah, I'm ready. I'm nervous. I'm anxious. I'm, I'm feeling all type of emotion right yeah, now. I get it. Well, this is the moment because this man could potentially be your father. So everyone, please welcome Michael to the show. <laughs> Michael, you sharp. Thank you. How you doing? Nice to meet you. You sharp. You are sharp. Give me a hug. I heard all of that. I mean. Beautiful. Thank I heard you. you just say that you heard all that. Yeah. What, was, what was going through your head when you heard that? A lot of hurt for her. Just wishing I had known so I could have maybe been there to do something and make it, make her life a little different. Got it. Yeah. And I heard you've been waiting for this moment for a long time. Yeah, for a while. Um, ironically, I started out looking for my father. Um, I don't know my father. Um, then kind of transition into finding a sister on my father's side. Mm -hmm. um, after finding that sister on my father's side, um, ironically, it led me to finding her. Oh, wow. Yeah, it led me to finding her. Wow, that's amazing that you were looking for someone else and then this connection happened. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> sure, we were sure, doing the you... same thing. Like, I'm <laughs> trying to figure out who my mom's dad is. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. What's going on over there, Sheree? What are you feeling? It's like I see her face and his face together. It's like, it makes me look like two I can't lie. We don't know the results yet, but y'all look a lot alike. I know what I keep saying. Uh, yeah. Let yeah. yeah. me see. I know, right? Same. It's a smile on yeah. the eyes, yeah. yeah. What's going through yeah. your head? I, I just want to know. Yeah. <laughs> We're going we're gonna to get there a little bit. So you first connected with Nashe. Did you even think that she could be your daughter? What was the first thought? Because she thought you were her cousin. Yeah. Uh, so initially. that was the first thought. Um, so I got a, uh, like an influx of, of emails mm -hmm. saying, hey, I, it's your third cousin. You just Now you have a second cousin and a fourth cousin. So when I got that influx, I decided to go on. Um, and in doing that, I went through a lot of the various emails that I had. And I saw Nashe's email that said, hey, cousin. And I think it said, how are you? Or... Uh, how are we related, something like that. Yeah. Um, and then I saw one about six months later that said hello, and I didn't respond to either one of them. Right. I think because it said cousin, there wasn't that great interest right. to really move on it, um, you know, because you got the third cousins, fourth cousins. And so because she said cousin, it kind of threw me a little yeah. bit. Um, ultimately, again, when I found the sister um, on my dad's side, and this is a crazy story because I, um, I then started kind of looking through it, I uh, gave the phone to my wife. I don't know how I, I don't know how I missed this, but she said, uh, "You either have a mother or a daughter," and I know she ain't your mother. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. And I was like, "Yeah, nah." So she handed me the phone. I said, "Oh, wow." You know, use a different word, but yeah. um, then I saw the percentile, and I also have a son that's on there as well, mm -hmm. and they shared the same amount of the same uh, percentile. Same percentile. Actually, wow. hers was higher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hers is actually percent higher, so because men yeah. carry a, 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 something I think is less gene that makes it a little lower. Yeah. So in that sense, I decided to reach out to her. I said, "Hey, give me a phone call." I, I left my number on yeah. uh, right on Ancestry, um, and asked her to give me a call. And I think she was reluctant. Maybe you know, I don't know who the heck this dude is. Uh, yeah. Like, oh, okay. Um, and so I continued to pursue, trying to reach out to her, uh, and then she eventually gave me a phone call. Do you remember having a relationship with her mother? <sighs> 
Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I do you remember know you her know face. Michael. You know you um, know Michael. I, it's I know. weird because after she showed me, I asked her to send me a picture. And after she showed me the picture, I was like, oh, I remember her vaguely. Um, I hate to use the word. I, 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 I called it transactions in, at, at times back then when there was no relationship <laughs> involved. Yeah. Right? It was, so it was a transaction that I had at a young age, 22, mm -hmm. I believe. Or, so um, I do remember that. Yeah. Um, but that's really it. I don't remember anything outside of that. I, I, well, you know, I, I know she was, um, she liked lavish, the, la the lavish lifestyle. Um, I knew she was high energy, for sure. Okay, okay. Yeah. Do you believe you're Nishay's father? I do. You do? I, you know, I'm not a scientist, but I don't believe DNA lies. Yeah. Um, that's kind of how I look at it, right? Um, yeah. I couldn't look at it any other way, especially when I have a child on there already and they share the same amount. Because you have one child. I have three. Three children. Yeah, okay. I have three. Um, but um, I have four. I have four, excuse oh. me. <laughs> um, I have four. Um, well, you're saying this. What would it mean to you to have her It would be, be amazing. Um, I actually have two boys and a girl. I have a daughter that um, it's always hard for me because she's 25, but she's like a one-year-old. She wears diapers. Um, she can't talk, um, and I've been taking care of since, obviously, conception. Her mom and I aren't together, but we share 50% custody, and I have her um, very often. She's actually with my wife right now while I'm here. Um, and I always had this conversation with my wife about, man, I wish I could just have a conversation with my daughter just to be able to talk to her, right, right? and to be able to express things and be able right. to communicate and build a relationship. Right. Um, I, I love her immensely, but obviously I can't do that, right? Yeah. Um, she shows me in other ways that she loves me, yeah. Yeah. Um, but she can't do it through a, a, a natural co conversation. Mm -hmm. And so right. when I found out she could be my daughter, that was the first thing I thought about, which is strange. I can now build a relationship. Yeah, that's what with, I got And I was too. like, she's always been there. I didn't know about it, Yeah. right? Yeah. To have that kind of relationship as well, to have a, 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 a relationship that could blossom and grow mm. through communication and love <laughs> and nourishment. So, Nisha right, and Michael, are you ready for the DNA outcome? Um, just find out if your father and daughter. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, let's do it. Let's All right. do it. Let's well, Niche, do it. I'm going to hand you the DNA outcome. Oh. On here, this will let you know if this is your father and will give you either clarity if like there's new family out there, a new relationship you could be establishing. Are you ready for this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> We'll be all right, no matter what. Oh, my God. <laughs> I honestly don't really know uh, how I'm to scared. feel right now. I'm nervous. I'm sad. I'm feeling all these emotions. I don't really know. Oh. I don't really know. <sighs> what happened? This is your father? Sheree, I'm going to start with you first of all because I, I know Michael's happy about uh, this. What is, what is in your I'm mind, Sheree, right I'm now? You, you oh my God. I cannot believe it. I'm, I... You're in shock. Oh my God. I'm elated. Elated? Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Thank Are you. you happy, well? <laughs> so please tell me from your opinion what happened after the show. Well, uh, after the show, um, so I ended up taking another DNA test with the guy that we mentioned last yes. time. Uh -huh. He wasn't my dad. I did Ancestry, and I kind of found some answers, but not like the direct answer to yeah. where I was going. And I kind of broke it down, but um, before I sent it in, okay, I told my mom, I called her. I was like, because we were talking at that time. Yes. Before we stopped talking and then uh -huh. started talking again. So I called her and I was like, hey, I just put my DNA test in the mail. I was like, it's about to get sent off. And she tells me, oh, so-and-so could be a chance. Mm. I was like, okay, so where has this so-and-so been the entire time? Because I've asked you repeatedly over and over and over 
Who could be a possibility? And you've told me over and over and over, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I think you're lying. You do know. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden she comes out with this name. Yes, and then she comes out with this name. And I was like, okay. So I'll wait six weeks, you know, and um, the stuff co comes back and I'm breaking it down. And I tell her like, hey, actually, I think he is my dad. And she's like, I'm busy. I got to go and hangs up. Oh. So, in your opinion, it's because of your mother why this has taken so long? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't sleep with all those guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, no, I understand. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. I just want to make sure, because the thing is, when you tell me that the relationship with your mother is still back and forth, it sounds like the relationship is still toxic. How's your relationship with her as of today? It's, we're working on it, I guess. I mean... I have a lot of mixed emotions right now, because part of me is like, she's my mom and I want to work on it, but then again, she has did me worse than anybody else has mm -hmm. ever done me. One of the comments why she wouldn't help me figure it out at first is because she said, uh, you're an adult, I ain't got to worry about you no more. Mm -hmm. I was like, it doesn't matter if I'm an adult or not, I'm still your kid, yeah. you know? And uh, What does your mother say when you ask her about your father? She don't know. That's all she says. That's all she says. She doesn't give you any other type of answers, anything at all. No. She's like, I don't know. I was messed up and I was doing stuff I wasn't supposed to. That's not an excuse. Because yeah. you gave me six different other guys' names, but you don't know who my dad is. Mm -hmm. has, this, has this search been putting a strain on your relationship? Is that what's causing the strain? A lot of it is because she don't care. Mm -hmm. Like, if she showed more sympathy and acted like she actually cared about me, I wouldn't feel the way I do, but she don't care. She's made it clear, like, we've been offered on the show multiple times. The first time it was supposed to be me and her, and she said, I do not care. I don't want to do it. So there is no way that Andrew's mom and my mom were not talking about it. And Because y'all raised his cousins, so they yeah. got it. They're communicating. Yeah, of course. So I, I even asked her, I was like, did you not sit back and think about it? She's like, oh, well, I was hooked on so-and-so, and I really wanted him to be the dad. It doesn't matter who you really want to be the dad, mm -hmm. it's what you know. Why, and you knew. Why do you think your mother's never helped you? She says uh, it's because uh, the dude that I think is my dad is a, a piece of mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, it doesn't matter what he is. I was like, I have that right to know because like I'm going through a lot of issues with my kidneys. Yeah. I was like, I deserve to know my, my family's medical history. I was like, I deserve to know all that. I was like, there's no reason for you to hide it from me just because you don't want me to know. Yeah, this makes sense why finding your father is so important. Outside of just wanting to know who yes. your father is, there's bigger things at stake when it comes to your health. Yes. Did your mother raise you? No. Uh, everybody else in my family did. Mm. Your mother didn't raise you? <laughs> no. Yeah. Okay. She, she'll claim she did. Oh, yeah. well, her comment is, she says... I gave everybody else the right to raise you, so really, I raised you. I was like, that's not how that works. Mm. <laughs> but okay, I'll let you take credit. Yeah. Do you hope that finding out the truth will also bring you and your mother closer? Or do you not care about the relationship? I want a relationship with her, but like, it's been 23 years and she's done said hateful stuff. She's done, her actions were very hateful. Her calling me names, saying, like, you know, you're 23, I don't care. I'll, when I see you on the street, I'm going to beat you like a trick, you know, stuff like that. Like, you don't say that to your daughter. Yeah. I ain't going to say that to my daughter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, just, my, I just don't care anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's if your mother long. tried to come back into your life and say, let me try to be better, let me try to do better for you, would you be open to it? Yeah, if she's willing to change, but I've heard that so many freaking times, I can't even tell you. Mm. Like... Are you really going to change, or is it just going to be for a month or two, and then you're like, I don't want nothing to do with you? Got it, got it. What has she done in the past? When I was five, I remember I had a birthday party, and I was living with my grandma, and she came, I remember it like yesterday, she came for like maybe five minutes and gave me a balloon and left. I cried forever about that, because you know, what five-year-old don't want her mom at the birthday? Yeah. And then like, you know, with her being in prison, I went through um, a lot. I had to go to therapy and stuff, because I was just so drained because I wanted my mom. I was a teenager. I felt like she should have been there and she wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. Because she could have made better choices and she didn't. And then she still says like, um, go, I did it for y'all. No, you didn't do it for us. You didn't have to do all that. Like, 
You could have got a job. You could have took care of us the right way instead of putting us through all that. There's no reason for it. And she says, well, my mom was like that. I don't know anything else. I'm not like that. Yeah. I will never be like that. Yeah. Never in a million years to my babies will I ever do anything she's done to me. So you're emotional right now, what's happening? It's just a lot because like I'm, I hear her side, but it's like I never get to tell mine. Okay. okay um, just because she's got the opportunity to have other people raise her and had the chances to see other ways of living is not what I was raised on. She's so quick to judge me and not realize how bad that affects me. And that's why we quit communicating because she wants to push me away. And I'm here, I'm here. You came today? I came. Mm -hmm. She's my firstborn, she's my daughter. And yeah, I wasn't there a lot of the time. I was a criminal, I sold drugs, I went to prison, I served my time, I did my crime, I served my time. But I learned from that. And what I have for my children today, I still have kids at home. It's not just hope, I do have other kids. Yeah. You know, um, and, and I have had a lot going on. She wants me to just stop everything and make it about hope. And I love her, I love her to death, but I can't stop my whole life just for this matter. It's just, it, it still don't make no sense. Okay, so you said you had other kids to take care of. You have my sisters and then your friends' kids. Yes. They ain't your kids. They we were, are your kids. They were my you should have put me first Hope, they were my instead of them. It Stop. don't matter. Stop. I'm your biological daughter. Hope. They have their mom. You pushed what me about away. Me? You pushed me away. It wasn't... I pushed you away because yes. you caused it. There's another person here that I want to talk to and get his side of this. It's time to talk to Hope's potential brother. Yes. Let's welcome Andrew to the show. Hope told me earlier that your father wanted nothing to do with you know this DNA and coming here. Do you have a relationship with him at all? No. None? I haven't had a relationship with him since I was a kid. How did you help Hope when you heard that you could be related? I started texting him about the names that were popping up, but I guess he pieced it Two two together from her text name about asking if seeing if he would do a DNA test and then me asking about these names and then at first he was saying a couple of them and then he just said I ain't saying no more. Got it. And just he just shut down. Yep. Yeah. If Hope is your sister, will it change your relationship? No, no. not really. No, <laughs> you were really close. You're really close. I really appreciate him. I do. Yeah. Well, listen, it's time that we solve this 23-year-old DNA mystery. Um, um, in this envelope is a DNA outcome. We've been here before. I've told you the last time you were here, you have been on my heart and mind. You deserve your answers. And as I told you last time, I will be here to help you no matter what is in this envelope. Are you ready for your DNA outcome? I guess, not really, because last time I came on here, it wasn't good. <laughs> well, we're, we're still praying and we're wishing that this could potentially be your brother right here, and then you have answers. Yep. Here you go. Okay. I don't really, I really don't want to open it. Okay. Okay. Oh, my oh God! My God! What does it say? It says Andrew is your brother. Yeah. Oh my God. Come here, Hope. Come here, baby. You did it. 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 You figured it out. You did. You're so smart. You did it. I love you. Oh my God. Here you go, Lo. You did it. I know. <laughs> He's you a now, brother. You, you now know who your father brother. is. And again, like I said before, what a blessing that you were raised with your brother. You were raised. You know each other. Yes. <laughs> and you said it's your best friend. What is What's going on in your mind right now? I'm just, 
If it wasn't for Bob, I wouldn't be here and we wouldn't have figured it out. Yes. If he didn't agree to coming on here and doing this with me, I would have never figured it out. Yeah. And I'm just so, I appreciate him so much. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew, do you have other siblings? Okay. Mm, I was hoping she would, if I found out I had another sibling, <laughs> she would be, that it would be a boy. That it would be a boy because now I have eight sisters. And so you're the only boy? She don't have any brothers. That's my brother. That's your brother? <laughs> Andrew, I got to tell you, I feel what you're going through. I only have sisters. All older sisters. Like it's four of us than me. So, but let me tell you something. That's a blessing in life. Yes. To be surrounded by women, you've been yeah, very yeah. blessed. All right? <laughs> and now you have your brother. I know. If it wasn't for you helping me, though. It... I will. I'm just happy. I'm just happy. I, you know, I don't want to take any credit for this because this has been you. Perfect. This has been you not giving up on yourself. This has been you trying. This has been you making sure that you did the work for yourself to heal, to heal your family. You are... Uh, you're greater than you even know. Like, yes. there's, there's a light in you and a greatness in you that I don't even think you even have tapped into yet. Because for you to have the courage to do this after all of that rejection and still never give up on yourself, still never give up on your answers, still never give up on your family, you deserve this moment. She does. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you would have. You would have got here. I'm so thankful for you. You got your sister. You got your sister. OK. What are you thinking right now? <laughs> like, it's crazy because, like, I helped raise him. I put him in timeout in the corner. <laughs> I mean, and, like, they was raised, like, the only boy in the family was Bubby. You yeah. know, like, he's Bubby. And, like, Bubby. just for that to be like that, it's, it's amazing. I'm so glad she got some answers. Yeah. She figured it out on her own. She did. She, she did. really she did. did. Because I couldn't help her. I wanted to, but yeah. I couldn't. Yeah. I yeah. can't believe it. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. I'm she's so a, she's happy a right private now. investigator. <laughs> I've been looking for so long. And it was like on my birthday. And on my her birthday, birthday, yeah. And everything. It was like, I got you hope to sit back and enjoy the ride. Yeah, yeah. You, you made it here. You made it here. And you now have your answers. You know who your father is. Will you try to reach out for a relationship with him? Or No. Yeah, yeah. I think he's worth more than them. I like just want to... Yeah. I really... Uh... You just want answers because now you know. Yeah. And especially with that health stuff, now you have Andrew. What's your nickname, Bubba? Bubby. 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 Well, now you have Bubby <laughs> that can give you some answers about your health. You are able to go in together. Yes. I do think that there's a part of this relationship that now is able to heal. Yeah. Mom, the big thing I say to you is you got to just remember that from this point on, when she says she needs answers and stuff, as hard as it's going to be, you took the big step of showing up today. Yeah. She just needs you to show up. She just needs you to show up. And as much as I know it's you want to go, you've been rejected, you have to understand that her rejection is really more confusion. Yeah. She's just hurting. And I want you to remember that 14-year-old girl in you that was hurting, that felt rejected, that's what she's been feeling. And so I know sometimes you're, you're going to come up and say, I, you rejected me too, so I'm going I'm to lash back out. But you can't. Yeah. You can't. Because there's a beautiful relationship that could be built here. It could really be built here. Yeah. And yeah. I think y'all can do the work. And if you need some questions, I'm going to give you all my number. Y'all can call me. I can help y'all through it. OK? <laughs> I can help y'all through it. Thank all right? You. But good luck. I hope you did it. You did it. You did it, girl. A lot of people reach out to me with the hope that I will uncover a truth that could lead to relief or closure. But sometimes it leads to heartache. One way or another, when things come to light, it's a moment of growth. Because when we are armed with the truth, remember, friends, we can never be lost in the dark. Kiara's mother was only 15 years old when she found out that she was pregnant with her. She was terrified of having a baby so young, but she did her best to raise Kiara on her own. Kiara appreciates her mother's dedication to her, but has always struggled with the man she believes is her father. He has been denying her off and on for her entire life. Recently, he broke her heart for the final time when he told her, go find your real father. She came to me to ask for help to get a DNA test to reveal whether or not Rashad is, in fact, her biological father. How's it been for you knowing that Rashad has been denying you? It's, it's really been hard. I don't express my feelings a lot. Yeah. I try to keep it down, but everything that's been happening lately, he's been kept going on and on about the situation. I didn't care at first. 
But then, like, the last thing that he said, it really broke me a lot. When do you remember Rashad first denying you? I was around 11, 12. Yeah. But um, my mom said it was even younger than that, but I don't have no memory of all of that happening. So I know that my producer said he sent you a nasty text recently. Yeah. What was that text? It was basically him saying that he's not my father and it's out of two other people. Here in love. I mean, I know this is hurting. Is it the text? You're not a daughter, never been, actually needed a blood test. Don't think you're mine anyway. Go find your real dad. I want to know from you, do you want a relationship with him? Do you want him to be your father? I do. I really do. Yeah. And why? Because I see how a lot of people get treated by him. He's a good man. He is. But, like, it's just, I think it's just with me, to be honest. He shows emotion with different people more than he shows emotion with me. Yeah. You took a DNA test. Yes. Do you think he's your father? I do. And now it's time to hear from her mother, Kiana, to get her side of the story. Do you have any doubt that Rashad is her father? I do not have no doubts. Uh -huh. I was 15 years old. Like, okay, I was pregnant at 15, but I don't have no doubts whatsoever. So when did he start denying her? She started denying her, I could say, around like seven years old. But she like basically, they did another DNA around like 11 years old. So that's when everything just started going left. So I'm confused. So at 11 years old, he did a DNA test. Yes. Then why are we still here questioning this? Because he did not go through with it. OK. That's so my issue. He did not go through with it because I feel like he know she his. Got it. Every other two years, he like, oh, it's not my baby. Then another two years, that's my baby. Then another two years, it is my baby. It's getting confusing. God. It's getting frustrating. Yeah. Okay, so have you ever said to him there could be another man that's possibly the father? Um, when we was very, very young, I'm not going to lie, I did say that. Because I was in over some mad situation because he had a girlfriend and... Got but it. I know for sure that that's, that's not true, and she, he, he's their father. So you were young, you made a comment, and then he latched onto it. Yeah. Did you make that comment around the time when she was six, seven? No, when this I only said it one time. Okay. I only said it one time when I was young. I was like 17 years old when I said it. And since then, I've been just like saying, you her father. I know for a fact you her father. My producers told me that one of his complaints is that you were with other men. Were you with other men? Not when, you were when with I him? was pregnant. No, I wasn't. But if I'm not with you and you're not my boyfriend or anything like that, I'm going to be with other men. <laughs> I'm not going to stay single because you want me to have just, just, just be with you. Yeah. No, I'm 15. It happened. I had her. And it is what it is. I'm not going to stay single because you want me to. How far along were you when you found out? I was four pregnant? months pregnant. I didn't even know I was pregnant. Yeah. I was four months baby having a baby, so I did not know. My and how long were y'all together at that point? We wasn't even together. And right now, I want to bring out the alleged father, Rashad, to hear his side of the story. Rashad, come on out. You sent a text to your daughter. Yep. Yes. Do you think Let's that text? Do you think that text is a loving text? It wasn't appropriate at all. But this is why. Then why did you send it? Because she, my daughter, was texting me back and forth, um, talking about how I'm a deadbeat, um, I'm no good, I'm not there, which is totally not true. She be with a bunch of cousins and friends who dads are in jail, who dads are dead, and she's filling them. And, and it rubbed off on her because at the same time, like, like I'm always was there. I, but do you think it reinforces her feelings when you say things like this? No. Because if, if you're feeling pain by your daughter saying something to you, I'm a parent. Children say things out of their mouth all the time. But it's our job it as wasn't, parents to step above it wasn't and appropriate. rise above that. Listen, right. And it wasn't appropriate. You didn't know. No. And I get that. I wanted to hurt my daughter's feelings. You know why? Because she hurt my feelings. She told me. I get it. Hold on, hold on. Here How you got go. your daughter telling you to But I want, I want, so, I want, I want to take a so second. So she hurt my feelings, and I end up texting her back that stuff like, you know what? Go find your real dad. 
I did say that. Because you know what? At the end of the day, I'm not going to sit here and tolerate that. I'm going to love you from a distance. And I bet she ain't showed up text messages. I'm going to love you from a distance. You want to be disrespectful and disobedient? I love you from a distance. Before yes, that, before he said that... I hurt her feelings that... because she told me to... Okay, before So I told her to find the real dad. Anyways, Stop it. Anyways, before... Excuse Before my language. he sent that text message, me and him was on the phone for like a whole hour. Say we wasn't. We were. Okay. And now I told I my girl you, that. And I told and my I girl that. I asked you. Yes. I asked you not to say nothing to Kiara. Didn't I tell you that? I told you I was going to talk to her. You don't tell her. me what to do. Okay. But you be disrespectful Rashad, Rashad, to my daughter. Rashad, I want to know this. What will you do if she's not your daughter? I'm going to be there for No, you're not. Move around. This is, even if I want to be there, move around now. You get me? This is what I've been going through I'm since she was a kid. You're not the father. I get I'm that. tired. You're not the father. All right, listen, everyone. Angel was having sex with the baby. Stop All right, it. everyone. Listen, when we come back, we'll find out whether or not Rashad. Angel was having sex with me you too, huh? Slut. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> no, no, no. Angel was having sex with me too, and I told your girlfriend. Listen, listen, listen. Stop playing with listen, she knows listen, a lot. Listen, we have to stop this. I'm old, dude. You be messing with? Don't get checked, man. He's so. But hold on, but you're participating as well. That's what we're gonna do. Don't get checked. Yep, you gonna get yeah. checked. Y'all know y'all daughter's backstage watching this, right? Yes. You showed up because you were willing to do the work to figure out if it's your daughter so that maybe you could start to heal. And you're letting this relationship you have with somebody you met when you were 15 affect another generation. I can already hear from your story that you had trauma and pain. You were 15, went into jail, or in jail when you were 16 or 17, whatever the timeline is, and then you stayed in jail, which means that there was I some didn't issues. I stay in jail. I, I got, I got I'm, better. I, I became, I, yeah, I'm, like, not, I'm, like, not, I'm, not, I'm not dogging you right now. What I'm, what, what I'm saying right now is that you had a history of not having people there for you, not having support. That's the only reason a young man ends up in those situations. Well, I you ended up in those situations because I grew up without a father. You just repeated what I said. I said, you were 16 years old with no support. I heard it. How'd you know that? Because I can see the way you're acting. I'm trained in this. But this is what gets me, is that this is why this is not entertaining to me. It's because at, a, at the end of the day, the same hurt you received, the same hurt she received, all y'all doing is putting this on a little girl who doesn't deserve this. All I was I trying to do... I want to know to you, is when you were 17. All I wanted... All, listen, listen. All I wanted to do is be there for all my kids. And I'm there for every single last one of my kids and take care of every single last one of my kids. Me and my daughter being inconsistent, it's only because of the, the family member that they grew up in the household with and Kiana. Me, them arguments has caused me to pause because she kept this, my daughter away from me. I'm say to you, Plenty of times, hear Karamo. Here, listen, listen, because I understand what you're saying, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what relationship you have with her. You're making the choice to engage. You're making the choice to be disrespectful. You're making the choice when you're hurt to disrespect your, your potential daughter. You're making those choices. And every time you get upset, every time you get heated, every time you feel like you're being challenged, that comes from that pain that you had as a little boy, you then lash out. And I think one of the things that I want to talk to you about later after we get to this is helping you to understand that you're better than lashing out. You're better than that. You said you don't want to be your father, then you have to start acting in different ways. What I do know better. is that what... And that's the truth. Which, which is I true. I think you're better than that. All right, welcome back, everyone. Before we get to the DNA results, I want to bring Kiara and her mom, Kiana, back out. Welcome them back to the stage. I felt sorry for walking off. I had to. I got it. Why did you feel like you need to walk off? Because I, I know myself with him. He's very, very rude, very ignorant, disrespectful, and I don't got time for that. Both of y'all were kids that yeah. had to grow up fast. Exactly. And unfortunately, y'all didn't get all the life skills and tools you need. And y'all have been in defense mode. Y'all have been in modes where y'all are trying to do your best, but making the bad decisions. At the end of the day, your daughter wants to know if you're the father. You mm -hmm. said, go find your real father. It's my daughter was... regardless. Here, here, here goes the results. You scared, huh? No, take a not seat, at all. Take a seat, take a not seat. Not at all. No. I'm not. And when hey! <laughs> Woo! Can I have that? She mine? Yeah, she mine? Yeah. Can I have an apology, please? Not to you. Why? 
But I will apologize to you. I'm so, so sorry if I brung you any type of pain before today about even mentioning stuff like this in the text messages and stuff like this. I swear to God, like, I'm so sorry, daughter. Like, I always knew you was mine anyway. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. That's what I want. This is exactly what I want right here. I'm sorry. Can I have this, please? Sorry. <laughs> and I love you so much. And I don't want you to think that I don't. I swear to God, I love you so much. I'm sorry about lashing out times. I will get better. I promise. I promise. <laughs> so, you all need this healing. I love you. I love you too. This is what I'm going to offer to you as a family. If you both truly want to stop the chaotic co-parenting, I'm going to offer both of you anger management mm -hmm. so that you can learn the skills to be able to communicate better when you're with each other so that way you stop shooting bullets at your daughter that's going to hurt her for the rest of her life. I apologize to you too. So I'm going to ask y'all. Not no hug, but can I get a handshake? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask y'all right now. <laughs> Hold on, right now. One second, one second. I'm going to ask y'all right now, because I need this commitment. Can y'all two commit from your daughter to stop this chaotic co-parenting for her? I will commit. Yes. Can you say to your daughter? I will, co I will commit and, and do the best I can and to, to make you happy and to not, to not lash out with anger and to also respect your mom, because I know that by not respecting her too, and you you feel her emotionally. So if I'm saying all this hurtful stuff, you gonna you gonna vibe with mommy because that's exactly where you're staying at. And I apologize for that too, because I shouldn't have to be talk saying names and calling mom this and that, and that's that's wrong. I'm sorry. And I will get way better with how I talk to you. And if if something's a real situation, I will rather just hold your hand and let's sit down and talk about it rather than accusing you of anything. Great. Thank because you. I never sat you down. Thank you. I never sat her down yeah. from that situation she brung up. I just yeah. lashed out. Yeah. And that Good. was wrong of me. So now, can you two commit to going to that anger management? I'll go. I'll go. You go? I'll go. Y'all yeah, gonna be all right. You're gonna be all right. You're especially going to be all right because what I'm going to teach your parents is to put you first. Thank because you. right now they've been putting their emotions first and you need to come first. Yes. And as you grow up, never allow anybody to put you second. You come first. And don't lash out, okay? When they learn anger management and they start learning these skills, ask them, say, can y'all teach me these skills too? Right. All right? <laughs> Seriously. Because I already know you, you picked up these skills and you're about to be 18 and I don't want you to start doing this in your own life as well. Break the pattern now, okay? You have a lot of strength and vulnerability in you. You can break it, all right? But I'm glad you committed to getting help because I believe this could be a family that can start to heal. <laughs> Welcome to the show, friends. My guests, Nate and Anissa, are here to resolve a DNA mystery. Anissa says that she was rescued by her potential father at 10 years old from what she now knows was a crack house. Oh. Nate also suspected he had a daughter, but them sharing DNA was always a question. Today, we will uncover the mystery First, let's meet Anissa to get her side of the story. Hi, Anissa. How are you doing? Hi. Nice so to nice meet you. you. Yes, works. thank you. You look very pretty in this thank red. Thank you. Uh, yes. So, Anissa, you, I just got to get to it because reading that, you went through a lot of hard things when you were younger. Tell me about it. Yeah, um, I did go through a lot of hard things when I was younger. Like, I don't want to start tearing up. Like, my mom... Like, she's very abusive. Like, she was a drug addict. And, you know, like, it was really hard for me because, like, at that tender age, like, I didn't really understand. So I was looking for love. I was looking for the love. Mm -hmm. and it was always absent. Like, to the point where, you know, I, I, I wasn't going to school. Um, I didn't know how to be around other children. So I had to learn how to, like, act around other people. Yeah, your social skills were gone. Exactly. Yeah. Um, not eating for days. 
I was being traded, my, like my body. She's selling me for drugs. Nice. And um, it was just hard. It was just like, I felt like, why did I exist? Yeah. So your potential father rescued My you. hero. Yeah, my, hero. my, I still call him my dad because no matter what the results say today, like, I, like, I still feel that energy, that connection. Like, my, mm -hmm. my dad came to rescue me when I was, like, 10, and I, I was born again. I was back in school. I was around kids my age. Like, I was literally eating every day. Yeah. Like, and all of, this, all of the things that, like, young girls today, like, hate about their dads, like, he's always asking where I'm at, or he's overprotective. That was what I was longing for. Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted. And I got that, like, but it took some time. Yeah, so. and you were in a crack house at that time when he found you. Yeah, I was. Was that your first time seeing him again? Yeah, that was my first time seeing him again because, like, what my mom did was, like, hide me from him, like, mm -hmm. because she was, she was taking it, she was exploiting me. She was taking advantage of me, not for what mothers do, to, like, with daughters. Like, this was, like, to the extreme level. Like, every time he would try to get close, pack up, let's go to a different hotel or motel or crack house, you know? In that time period, how did you stay so strong? Never lose hope. Like, for anybody that's going through or has, has been through what I'm going through, always keep that strength. Good for you. So where are you right now in your life? I have my own place. Like, I'm a makeup and hairstylist. Working hard, like, you know, and trying to be that figure. Like, whoever <laughs> is out there watching and is going through what I'm going through, just know that you're going to make it. You better preach. No, you keep it's, preaching. It's not about, Listen. it's not about what you've been through or, or, or like your past it's about your future like you don't hold on to the past because that's never going to shape your future like for me when i went when my dad came to rescue me i say that like superman like that restored my hope and my faith like okay like i actually get to like i belong here like i could i'm, I'm human mm. you know so then i started with my passion like doing hair doing makeup and being social because like i I realized that I like being around people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? That hope and finding your passion and never giving up, I think right. is so great. But I also think it was, part of it is that, yes, your, your hero came into your life and got to you, but what I love about this is that it's a story of understanding we all need support. Right. And sometimes in the darkest moments, we forget that support's out there. Exactly. So I'm glad that um, your father, your potential father, <laughs> could be that hope for you and could be that support for you. Yeah. So then why are you here today? One day, I heard him talking over the phone. I just heard him say, you know, it's been years, and I don't know how to tell her that I might not be her dad. Wow. Because were you living with him at this point? No, I wasn't. I was already, I, I was grown. Oh, you were grown at this point? Yeah. So when he rescued you, you lived with him and he took care of you? Yeah, like, like my own dad. Like, I never, like, would have thought that it could be a possibility that he wasn't my dad. But then I understand, like, from his point, because what my mom was doing, like, she was running around, doing whatever she was doing, so if, it's a possibility. So, But I'm here to find out, yeah. and I'm here because I needed you. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm glad I could be here for you. So how did that make you feel when you heard him questioning it? It made me feel horrible, but like, I don't hate my dad. Like, the only thing is, like, I just felt hurt because it was like, dag, like, you could have told me, you know? But mm. he probably had his own reasons. Like, I was already damaged, so he probably didn't want me to feel like, okay, like, if you're not my dad, then I don't have anybody. I'm back at square one. Yeah. So, so what are you hoping for today? Uh, I'm hoping for a miracle. I'm hoping that that's <laughs> my dad. Yeah. My real dad. Because at the end of the day, like, I know, like, he would never, like, leave me. Mm -hmm. He's been there. He never judged me. He's always been there rooting me. So, when was the last time you talked to your mother or saw your mother? Um, I've heard through the grapevine that she's passed away. I don't feel any way about it because it's just, like, Who's going to be mad that the devil's gone, you know? I understand that. But I do have to say, um, I, I know that was, seemed a little bitter, but I, I forgave her. It is her. Seem bitter. It I, I, seem I've been bitter. forgave her. That's why I was able to move on. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. And, and just let you know, it didn't seem bitter. Because any, to hear that you were rescued from your potential father, but from your father in a crack house, we can, un, any one of us, without even experiencing that, can understand why you would say, okay. You're gone because she had her own demons that she was dealing right. with. And so I am glad that you have given her forgiveness. And that, of you, that forgiveness has allowed you to feel like you can continue to grow. And I can see the woman that you've become. Thank you. Well, we will find out soon if Nate is Anissa's biological father. But before we do, let's meet Nate. Welcome to the show.
And Even this if is you're a not... very special girl. The place that I found her and I had to rescue her from, no child should have yeah. gone through it. And her mother basically exploited her for her own sickness. Now, I don't want to teach my daughter to be weak at any point, so you know, I'm trying to hold it in. I didn't know <laughs> you guys okay. could see me back there. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to come out and tell Anissa, because I'm not sure. And I didn't want to mess up what she had going on in her life, because that could inter could have interfered in her education, you know, her dreams. Yeah. And I didn't want her to look at me any different, yeah. regardless of what how them DNA tests come out. This is my daughter, yeah. period. This is my daughter. Yeah. I got to tell you, I know you're trying to hold it in, but your vulnerability um, as a man, as a black man, is a beautiful thing to see. You being vulnerable, like, I hey, heard her she earlier never really seen me cry. No, I didn't. And this I don't is... want her to see it, but if it was me, it would hurt me, too. I'm just trying to imagine if it was me on the other side. And, you know, she, I'm all she got. Yeah. And regardless of what I want you to know, I don't care about them DNA tests. You belong to me, and I'm gonna take care of you regardless what. It's all right, don't cry. You okay? So, um, were you in Anissa's life prior to rescuing her from the crack house? I mean, not really. I was young, and in the beginning, I didn't believe Anissa was my daughter because I found out things about her mother. Some of her friends was letting me know, well, you know, that might not, nah, she might not be pregnant while you because she be sleeping around, running around. And it broke my heart. I just had, I just stayed away from her yeah. after that. So you were in a relationship with her during that time when she was being Yeah, born. well, I thought I was. Yeah, I was just being pl played. Yeah, played. Yeah, but I did love her. Yeah. Were you there when Anissa was born? Uh, no, not in the hospital. Okay. But when I seen Anissa, and honestly, I don't want to sound like a I was young. She was like the whitest baby ever. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> hold on. And that's, I was like, that's a caucus baby or something. I that's got a, a little darker. Yeah, but she did get darker. Over the years, I was just like, nah, nah, no, no. This is not my child. And then what switched for you? Because like she said, you were a hero. You came and rescued her. What switched? Because she's okay. it's, she, you were 10 when that happened? Yeah, I was 10. So okay, 10 so uh, it was a lady that I knew. And for some reason, this lady got my number. And then she called me. Actually, she called a friend of mine's. And he said, your daughter is at this lady's house. And once I found that out, I just, I didn't even ask myself twice. Mm -hmm. I just went to get her. Yeah. You and I never that. told her that. That was, that was like the best thing of my life. I couldn't be a man. I couldn't be a man again. This is when Anissa was around 10 years old. I was a little older now. Yeah, you're So I know the difference between right and wrong. Yeah. So, no questions. I got my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> Nate, we just all saw you during the commercial break get Sorry. very emotional. What was going on in your mind? It's just, she, she been through a lot. I have. You yeah. know? It's not really just for me. I don't, I, I wanna, I wanna empower my daughter. Yeah. I just want her to know that, that I'm here for her no matter what the outcome be. Just don't let it, don't let it break you down. It's just gonna make us closer. And I just feel the struggle that you've been through as an individual. I know I've been there, but it didn't happen to me. My mother didn't do that to me. So I just feel her pain, that's yeah. it. Yeah. But I'm here for you no matter what. Okay, I love you. I love you too, Vanessa. I don't want you to cry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't I'm sorry. cry. I'm sorry. I've never seen you cry like this, so. I'm just, here. you always taught me to be strong and, and headstrong, so. Yeah, what is the strength tears? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. that yeah. These are strength tears. Trust me, these tears is gonna water and flourish and nourish whatever we, the seed we planted. Trust me. Yes. These are strength tears. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, let me tell you something. I'm gonna say that before. You just inspire something new, man. <laughs> Thank Those you. are strength tears. I Thank love you. Them. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, that's beautiful. You know, Nate has been waiting 27 years to uncover this DNA mystery. Are you both ready? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm nervous, man. What are you feeling? Oh, my gosh. Like, just, I, like, feel so nervous. Like, butterflies is in my stomach. Like, I almost wish that would have just left it like that. Yeah. But 
got to just, you know, we both deserve the truth, so. Yeah. Well, in this envelope is the DNA outcome of if Nate is your father. All right. This is the moment I'm going to give you the envelope so that you can right. see what it says. I am. I know I am. Hey! <laughs> hey! What? Come here. <laughs> uh, I love that. 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 <laughs> I told you. you got me for a while. I was like, I was like, no, no, no. You got me. No, I thought you. Don't do that, man. Well, well, so this, I don't have to cry no more. Uh, this is, yeah. So this is your daughter. How does yeah, that make you feel? I, I thought I was uh, sterile. <laughs> but thank you. Yes. Um, thank you. Thank you. Well. Well, I'm glad that I have this information. And um, my producers were told me that there's actually more to this story. Yeah. Um, that there's something that you actually need to tell. Now we know for sure yes, that you I actually just, need to tell yeah. your father. Well, <clears throat> now that we have this clear, um, I hope you don't mind. I mean, the gray hair is coming in already, but you're going to be a grandfather. What? <laughs> I'm gonna tell you this though, Nate, this is something beautiful because in this moment yes, right sir. now, because of your strength and your ability to step up and be vulnerable, you broke generational chains. Thank you. Thank you did that. Thank you. You did that. Thank you. And I don't, I, I don't wanna leave this stage without recognizing how powerful that is because you just heard your daughter say she's gonna be the best mom. She's gonna be there. Yep. And that's because you gave her a second shot. Exactly. You. you gave her a chance. You broke generational chains, and I think a, a not thank enough you. time we get to look at a man, especially a black man, and say, thank you for doing that. Thank you. Thank I appreciate you. that. Thank you, Tom. You did thank that. You, you did that. Thank you. Yo, and you did it as well. Because you, you had the strength to continue on as well, and so I'm proud of yes. you as well. This is on you, too. You know what I mean? This child is going to be born into a life of love and support. Yes, sir. Something that for you real. two didn't have at first when you were first kids. You know yeah. what I mean? You had it later once you met him, but... Yeah. This is this child is now going to never have to experience that. Never. And God never willing, the next nerves. generation, the next generation on, is going to never have to think about well, what happened if someone doesn't love me and support right. me? Because y'all have changed that. Yes, exactly. Yes. Good yep. job. Thank you. Yes, of course. You. I'm so happy you. for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What is it, Papa? Papa. 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 Yes, Papa. 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 I'm all excited for you. I'm, I'm proud of so you, man. happy. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Dad. Now, I could, now I'm sorry. Now no. I can really say that, like, with, with real confidence. With your like, chest. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, yeah. Dad. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to be there for you. This is beautiful. I'm so happy for you both. Thank Stay you. with us, friends. We'll be right back with more. Growing up, I never had my dad. Yeah. Um, first, can I tell you this? Mm -hmm. sure. If Andrea is not my sister, then you got a twin, I got a twin, Sarah got a twin. <laughs> Everybody get a twin from Oprah. Okay. I <laughs> so, <laughs> um, that's just how I feel. Uh -huh. No, I didn't have him in my life. Um, I missed out on that. Yeah. You know, that was just something that was not for me. Mm. I, um, my siblings, they fathers kind of let me come along. You know, it, yeah. as the kind of sympathy, yeah. don't leave her at home type thing. Yeah. Um, and that made me feel not wanted. Yeah. Here you go, my love. Um, definitely um, not love. Yeah. Like, why my daddy didn't want me? Why wasn't I good enough for a daddy? Why everybody else get to have one? <laughs> like, what's wrong with me? So, yeah. Yeah. That, it's that so hurt. Different. It hurt. A lot. Yeah. Did your mom ever have you try to meet him? Um, <laughs> when I was 13, she, we were in the car. She got out, went in my grandmother's house. She said, that's your daddy. Yeah. So I went up to him and I said that to him. Yeah, are you my daddy? And he said, no, and walked away. Mm. 
And my mom came out the house. I was crying in the car. And she just turned around like, cut all that out. Cut it out. Yeah. And I never asked again. Yeah. Well, I, get, I did, but it was years later. No, I get that. Your mom was probably so hurt from the situation, she didn't know how to process it. Exactly. So her only thing to, her only advice could be to you is do what she was doing, which was shut it down. Yeah. Just don't, don't feel the emotions. Don't feel. Yeah, that's what she was telling mm -hmm. me to do. Did but you, I feel. Yeah, of course you did. Uh, did you ever ask your mother why she told you that that was your dad? She said, because it was my father. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, he said he wasn't my father. She said, I said, that's your dad. Mm. Did you ever and try to talk to him again? No, I never got a chance. Next time I, I saw him, my physical eyes, he was in a cast. So I never got that chance. Yeah, I hear you. When did you find out that your father went to prison? I knew of an incident when I was younger. I was outside playing with, um, I didn't know at the time, his son, I knew that was his son. Mm -hmm. And an incident happened where he, um, he shot somebody. Mm. After that, um, that's what he went to prison for. Yeah. He didn't go right away, but yeah, that's what he ended up going to prison for. Um, my producers told me that you witnessed that and not knowing that he was I father. I did. I was outside playing with um, his, my brother at the time, I guess. Yeah. I, yeah, well, hopefully he might. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I was told to go in the house. I couldn't even, I didn't even get a, wasn't allowed to go back over there for like two weeks. Wow. I was not, I had to leave out the back door and I was not allowed over there for like two wow. weeks after that incident. So then you got older. Did you try to ask your mother about him again? No, she called me. Okay. And she said, um, I got something to tell you. Uh-huh. And I need you to come over. So I went over and she said, well, I'm going to tell you this before you see it on the TV. I go, what? Well, your daddy's going to be on America Most Wanted. They're going to reenact the whole situation and da-da-da-da. And I need to tell you before you see this. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I, I want to know, how hard was it growing up for you without your father? Because I'm hearing these moments where you're, um, these glimpses that were difficult, how, like, what was the rest of the time? Horrible. Yeah. Um, I don't know a lot of people, well, my siblings, their fathers were in, they were there. I didn't have that. Mm -hmm. I never got the daddy-daughter dance. Mm -hmm. I never got my daddy telling me with me and not today. And my daddy telling me I'm his baby girl. I never got that. Yeah. I never got, my kids never experienced him. You know, I never got a chance to experience my father. And I'm mad. I'm mad. Yes. Because I never got that. Yeah. And I deserve to have yes, a daddy. Did. Yes, you did. And I never got one. Yes, you did. So how did you end up connecting with Andrea? Oh, my goodness. I had told my god sister mm -hmm. um, about my dad. Yeah. And our hairdresser, she was at an appointment and she was telling our hairdresser about my dad and then she said his name. And at the time, my hairdresser was dating Andrea's brother. Mm. And she like, wait a minute, that name sound familiar. So she did a couple of phone calls and she called me and she was like, I think I might have found your sister, but I'll call you back. And it went like for 30 minutes, like wow. back and forth, yeah. back and forth. And then she called me like, I found your sister. I'm like, I got a sister. Uh, she like, girl, you got a sister. Yeah. So I was that beauty excited. shop phone chain. <laughs> that beauty shop phone chain. Wow. I was so excited. Yes. And um, I'm like, wow. How was it the first time you met her? I was so shocked. And we both, I'm, I'm quite, I don't know how she felt. And you definitely have to ask her. But she looked more like me than I look like me. Like, you crazy. <laughs> if she not my son, that's my twin. Like, my daddy, I look more like her daddy than her. Like, you know, I, that has yeah. to be my super. Yeah. My, all my siblings, they like, oh my God. I look like nobody in my family. 
know who am I? Mm. Like, can I belong to somebody? Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah, I hear you. I hear you. How did she take it when she the, when she got the news that you could be her sister? I'm, I mean, she was willing to meet me, so um, I came to her house. Like they brought me to her house, so I don't think like she was like opposed to it. But I know that because I'm just gonna say that I don't think because her family doesn't totally accept me, like she can't totally accept me. And like she won't open herself mm. up to me and I, like cause she really don't know. Don't know. So we have like this spurt of a relationship, mm. but I love her with my soul. And I just want her to love me like that. Yeah. <laughs> Does she ever talk to you about your father? We don't talk about him like that. Yeah, don't talk about him. No, Why not? Because I don't know. You have to ask her. Maybe because she not for sure. Mm. Maybe, like they say, everybody just got a twin. Mm. Did she ever talk to her father about you? <laughs> when she first went to go see him in prison, or at a point, he said I was his daughter. Mind you, my dad had brain cancer. So when she went to go ask him again, like, cause I was gonna go see him. She was gonna work it out where I could go see him. And he said, I wasn't his daughter, but he was on his deathbed and Cancer was eating his brain. So that's what everybody went with. Did you have a chance to meet him when he was in prison? I never got, he died before I could get on the list. Mm. And I know you said that you went to the funeral. What was that moment like for you? <laughs> Weird, like I wasn't really feeling like I belong. Yeah, and, and because you just told me that Andrea's family was having doubt. I, I pray to God that I give you some good news today. Uh -oh. I pray to God. <laughs> I really do hope. But listen, everyone, my guest Ivory says Andrea won't warm up to their relationship until she knows for sure that they are sisters. So everyone, please welcome Andrea to the show. I talked to my father a few times on the phone, but prior to that, my father got in trouble. Um, as Ivory said, he shot my brother's mother. Um, he was on the run. He was on America's Most Wanted. He called me and he told me that that was my sister, that this was her, this was his daughter. I went along with it. Um, he was in prison for a minute. He told me that this was his daughter. Um, on his deathbed, now it's not my daughter. I'm mm. like, I'm confused now. You said you're ready for your happy ending, so the only way we'll find out if you get that is if we give you these results. Are you ready? <laughs> this, is, this is the results you've been waiting all these years for, to know if this is your sister, to know if he was your father, to know where you belong. Are you ready? Yeah. It's yours to open whenever you're ready. This is for me, for me, this is everything. This is um, my identity. Yeah. This is 48 years of missing a part of me. Yeah. I know daddy not here no more, your father. Um, but I just believe what my mama said. And I know my mama would not lie to me. She was too straight from the hip for that. No matter what they say, you always gonna be my son. Your kids always gonna be my baby. I'm gonna always love you. And if it's not, you mama, I apologize to your mother. I really do. For doubt her, you know. But I don't doubt mama. Okay, I love you. Okay, okay. Period, period, period. I told y'all, I love you. <laughs> Oh, 
thank God, thank God. Oh. oh my gosh, thank God. I cannot lie. I was over here. I was over here praying. I'm like, I'm like, Jesus. Oh my God, I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for you. You got your good news. You got your good news. I'm sorry, y'all. You apologize. This your moment. I don't know. This your moment. No, 48 years. Like, I, like, people kept saying, like, thank your sister. Like, and Trump treated me so bad, man. Like, people treated me so bad. And I still love people. Yeah. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. I show okay. gratitude. Oh, my God. I show you so much gratitude. Because oh, I'm going to tell you this. Yes. No, 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 no. If it was not for you, your team is freaking amazing. And I show so much gratitude. Because <laughs> if it was not for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. 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 She is. But I want to say that I apologize for everything you went through. Yeah. I don't care about that stuff no more. <laughs> <laughs> you might. <have> to... <laughs> I don't care about that stuff no more. I, 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 I will say this. I hope that I hope that the family members that were there understand that your heart is big, and that even though sometimes pride can come up. And it's easy to be like, you know what, I ain't going to say nothing, I ain't going to do nothing. I hope that, I just pray to God that they can release any pride and just say, you know what, it's all right. We're sorry, and then accept you with full arms because you deserve it. Oh, they're going to accept it. Okay. <laughs> you said, you said ain't no pride. Oh, ain't nothing. I'm so happy you got your good news Thank today. You so I am too. I'm and so I want to say, again, it. gratitude to you because you without mm -hmm. you, this was not me possible. And then I got to meet my best friend. Because he was my best friend in my head. And my best friend got me that good news. We just friends 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 Do you love the Karamo Show? Yes. Well, we're back for season two. So make sure to subscribe to the Karamo Show.